All right, everybody, I'm going to run through this article real quick that I really wanted to share and I think is very important with what's happening with this phenomenon. And I'm going to try and go through this quick. I have to get out of here, but I wanted to get this out before I left today. Nothing is solid and everything is energy, something that I myself never understood most of my life, but have been studying the last few years. And I think something that most people have never thought about and don't care to think about. Scientists explain the world of quantum physics. So I'm just going to ahead and read this. I know everyone can read, but some people listen to this while they're driving along and they appreciate someone that gives information that they can listen to and they can filter it and do what they want with that information. Just add to, you know, things that they're aware of happening. And so anyway, let me just go through, I wanted to read this, make a few comments and just relate this to the phenomenon known as the Mandela effect. So it's been written about before over and over again, but cannot be emphasized enough. The world of quantum physics is an eerie one, one that sheds light on the truth about our world in ways that challenge the existing framework of accepted knowledge. Now, as I read this earlier today, I just, kept thinking of the Mandela effect the whole time. This just relates like you could just lay it over the phenomenon. It just relates perfectly. So here we go. What we perceive as our physical material world is really not physical or material at all. The material world is made up of atoms and those atoms are 99.9999999% empty space and they make up what we believe to be the material world. In fact, it is far from it. This has been proven time and time again by multiple Nobel Prize, among many other scientists around the world, winning physicists, one of them being Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist who made significant contributions to understanding atomic structure and quantum theory. Here's a quote by Niels. If quantum mechanics hasn't profoundly shocked you, you haven't understood it yet. Everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. And at the turn of the 19th century, physicists started to explore the relationship between energy and the structure of matter. In doing so, the belief that a physical Newtonian material universe that was at the very heart of scientific knowing was dropped. And the realization that matter is nothing but an illusion replaced it. Scientists began to recognize that everything in the universe is made of energy. Here's another quote from 2001. Despite the unrivaled empirical success of quantum theory, the very suggestion that it may be literally true as a description of nature is still greeted with cynicism, incomprehension, and even anger. This here had some Mandela effect bells ringing because <laughs> I've been confronted with lots of this cynicism and anger as I've been discussing my opinion on the phenomenon. Quantum physicists discovered that physical atoms are made up of vortices of energy that are constantly spinning and vibrating, each one radiating its own unique energy signature. Therefore, if we really want to observe ourselves and find out what we are, we are really beings of energy and vibration, radiating our own unique energy signature. That is, this is fact and is what quantum physics has shown us time and time again. That's what I believe is actually happening, that the people that are experiencing the phenomenon, which has been going on for a very long time and has been speeding up, where more people are experiencing it now. People were experiencing it and didn't know what it was. Fiona Broom gave it a name, which I don't particularly like. A lot of people think Fiona Broom created the effect. That's nonsense. She created nothing. She gave it a name. That's it. It's existed for a long time. There's uh, one woman. I've been listening to some of her videos. She's written a lot of books. I'm trying to think of her name right now. I know a lot of you have probably already said it. It's, uh, oh man, why is it escaping me? She wrote a book called Reality Shifters or Reality Shifts. 
Cynthia Larson. That's what I, that's what her name is. I believe it's Cynthia Larson. So anyhow, this has been going on a very long time, and for some reason, it has affected a lot of people in the past five months in a very big way. So there's a consciousness shift happening that I've been expecting for years, and it's an incredible thing, and I think it's a positive thing, and I think it's related to this. So anyway, let me finish this up real quick. We're much more than what we perceive ourselves to be. And I think that's part of the awakening that's happening. That we're learning who and what we really are. And it's just a fascinating time to be alive right now and to be experiencing this. I don't think the people who aren't experiencing it can't. I think they're too tied in and sucked into the matrix that we have constructed that we are within and without and I just don't think that their their frequency is not high enough the vibration of the atoms that make up their being to in order to see this but that doesn't mean that they're out of luck it just means that I don't think that they're aware enough and conscious enough in an expanded form uh, I know this all sounds crazy to some people, but this is my opinion. I know a lot of you agree with me. A lot of you don't. It's fine. You don't have to think. You can go back to, you know, just thinking of life the way you always did, but I'm learning that it's not the way I always thought it was. So, finishing this up here. These are what make up the structure of the atom. As you focused in closer and closer on the structure of an atom you would see nothing you would observe a physical void the atom has no physical structure we have no physical structure physical things really don't have any physical structure atoms are made out of invisible energy not tangible matter here's another quote by richard henry professor of physics astronomy at john hopkins university get over it and accept the inarguable conclusion, the universe is immater immaterial, mental, and spiritual. It's quite the conundrum, isn't it? Our experience tells us that our reality is made up of physical, material things, and that our world is an independently existing, objective one. The revelation that the universe is not an assembly of physical parts, suggested by Newtonian physics, and instead comes from a holistic entanglement of immaterial energy waves stems from the work of Albert Einstein, Max Planck, and Werner Heisenberg, among others. What does it mean that our physical material reality isn't really physical at all? It could mean a number of things, and concepts such as this cannot be explored if scientists remain within the boundaries of the only perceived world existing, the world we see. As Nikola Tesla supposedly said, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it'll make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Fortunately, many scientists have already taken the leap and have already questioned the meaning and implications of what we've discovered with quantum physics. One of these potential revelations is that the observer creates the reality. This is so important right here. I believe this is what the Mandela Effect has been teaching many of us. This phenomenon has opened my eyes to the fact that the observer really does create the reality. That's my opinion. It's not a proven scientific fact. If you've got a problem with it, then deal with it or ignore it or just go on the way you always have. You can do what you want, but a lot of us are waking up to what's really going on, in my opinion, and it's just such an incredible thing. So we're just about done here. I got another comment. The fundamental conclusion of the news of the new physics also acknowledges that the observer creates a reality. As observers, we are personally involved with the creation of our own reality. The stream of knowledge is heading toward a non-mechanical reality. The universe begins to look more like a great thought than like a great machine. Mind no longer appears to be an accidental intruder into the realm of matter. We ought rather hail it as the creator and governor of the realm of matter. So what's the significance of this information? The significance of this information is for us to wake up. <laughs> That's what we've been doing. That's what I've been doing since 9-11. That's what a lot of you have been doing for a very long time, some longer than me. 
some just in the past six months. Just some people, I think, just started waking up with the Mandela effect. They were just watching, you know, TV and sports and just tied in with everything and not thinking about life or not thinking about reality or consciousness or anything. And now they've just been sprung into this whole new landscape of, of information that they were never even looking at or thinking they were going to be looking at. So this is very incredible. And people are starting to realize that we're all energy, radiating our own unique energy signature. Feelings, thoughts, emotions play a vital role. Quantum physics helps us to see the significance of how we all feel. If all of us are in a peaceful, loving state inside, it will no doubt impact the external world around us and influence how others feel as well. Another quote by Nikola Tesla, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. I made a lot of comments to people over the last so many months talking about, well, maybe your vibration of your atoms isn't high enough or the frequency of your being. And they're like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? You're so crazy. I mean, this is not ways that most people think. So studies have shown that positive emotions and operating from a place of peace within, which I'm trying so hard to do on a daily basis. I'm trying not to be angry about anything. It's, you know, it's not always easy. I have children. They make me angry. I'm asking my son to help keep me conscious of of my state of being and, and you know how I'm thinking about things and when I'm getting a little too angry and to remind me that I'm trying to work on these things. This is a process that a lot of us are going through and have to consciously think about how we're reacting to things. I can react anyway. My kid can spill milk and I can say, oh, that's all right. Accidents happen. Pay attention more next time. Or I can just go, what the hell? It's just start going nuts. I mean, I choose my own reaction. So I'm trying to be more conscious of my reactions, and I think that's part of this. Bottom line for me, everyone, I think this is making me a better person because I'm concentrating on trying to be a better person, trying to smile at people, strangers, just trying to make an impact around me. And it's very possible. You, it's very easily done if you're aware of what you're doing. So at our subatomic level, does... The vibrational frequency changes the manifestation of physical reality. I think it does. If so, in what way? We know that when an atom changes its state, it absorbs or emits electromagnetic frequencies, which are responsible for changing its state. Do different states of emotion, perception, and feelings result in different electromagnetic frequencies? Yes, this has been proven. Here's a great video that touches on what I'm trying to get across here. So it's like a two minute video. It's really good. It talks about the heart and I would recommend it. So I'll go ahead and link this article down below so you can come to the article and then click here to go see the little two minute video. And that's about it. I just wanted to get this out there. Uh, sorry if my presentation wasn't the greatest. I rushed through this. Um, I hope that this rang true for some of you. I hope it helps some of you. I Maybe some of you think it's garbage. That's fine. <laughs> Move along. You can go get your information elsewhere. So that's it. I will talk to everybody soon. Take care.